Hi, I'm John Fishbein, Senior Program Manager for GFOA. Today we're talking with Joe Costello. Joe is the CFO of Dallas's Transportation Authority. Uh, Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your uh, organization? Sure, sure thing. I've been with uh, DAR, the Dallas Area Rapid Transit, for six years now, and previously spent 20 years with the public transportation folks in Chicago, with the Regional Transportation Authority. Um, I've been very involved with GFOA. I've been on, on the board, um, long time on the um, debt management committee, and, um, and I'm a budget reviewer. Uh, so very involved with GFOA. Um, and uh, and yeah, those of you listening, if you're not involved, get involved. It's the most fun you've ever had. Uh, as a point of uh, reference, I worked with Joe for quite a long time at the RTA in, in Chicago, so we have a, a long history uh, together. Uh, let's get down uh, to some basics. Number one, uh, is your staff back at work, or are you working off-site still? We are working off-site. We have not opened up our office. Um, we do have a group of folks uh, looking at what it would take. Um, as far as, you know, distancing and cubicles and all that, uh, we've gotten some um, uh, information from uh, different uh, uh, firms um, that, um, you know, give you a how-to. And so if you're thinking of opening your office, there's, uh, you know, there's firms out there that have uh, developed the information. But at this point, we don't have a date. You, uh, your uh, system has both buses and rail, right? How is yes, that sir. working with COVID-19? Before we get into the financials, how are you doing spacing on that? Okay, uh, sure. And, and so um, certainly when uh, the economy closed down, um, we saw a big drop in ridership. As things have opened up a little bit, it's, it's come back up. Right now we're at about 50% of pre-COVID um, levels on the bus and rail. And commuter rail is down about 70%. So um, our, our thesis is that uh, com commuter rail riders uh, tend to have the ability to work from home uh, more than the folks on the bus and train. Uh, we've been doing a distancing, so watching our load factors and, and making sure that um, we don't have uh, too many folks. Uh, we're using the number 20 or a bus that can take 40. Um, and so, you know, so giving people the ability to stay. Uh, what's your fiscal year beginning? Uh, we start so October What have you been doing, you know, in the remaining few months of this year? Have you had to adjust your budget? Oh, oh we've been busy. Oh, John, we have been busy. And, 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 you know, hats off to my budget staff. They've literally been working around the clock. Um, when, when we started seeing the economy closing down, uh, we, we hit the pause button, if you will. On March 14th, I sent a quick email to my boss. I said, finance is stopping all spending. No hiring, no procurements, nothing. We're not letting anything through because we think this is going to be bad. Um, and then we spent a lot of time in March um, trying to figure out how bad we thought it was going to be and what kind of cost containment efforts are, are we going to need to do? So happy to go into some particulars, but kind of that's the, 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 the lead off. So have that. You ha how have you balanced your budget? Have you hit your hit into your reserves? Have you cut service? Have you you know had layoffs? Uh, what have you been doing? Sure. So I read and freeze. Um, it's all spending. Um, and, and looking at everything that's trying to get through finance, even if it's in the budget, say, no, you know, no travel, no training, no company picnic, nothing. Um, and so really scrutinizing every time. We, um, in April 1st, we, under the um, authority of a, an emergency declaration by the governor, uh, we cut back service. Um, we dropped it about um, to 80% of what we normally run. Um, you know, you heard me say ridership's down by half, but in order to have social distancing, we need to put, you know, keep some level of service up there so that uh, we can have some uh, social distancing on the bus and the train. So I, I guess has that kind of made your budget budget imbalance, or you had to hit your fund balance? Well, 
fortunately, um, the CARES Act provided some money uh, for public transportation. So otherwise, we would have had to dip into reserves. But that, that's given us a little bit of cushion to downsize our workforce. Um, we think that we're going to need to take um, almost about 10% of our workforce, uh, reduce our budgeted headcount by almost uh, 10%, close to about 8%, um, in order to um, kind of weather through this storm and, and have our uh, operating budget reduced uh, to a size that uh, we can afford. Is that temporary or permanent? <sighs> yeah. I ask the that questions. I can do that now since we don't work together. <laughs> well, you know, we're hoping it's temporary, um, but but we're planning for it to take a while for our revenues and, and, and passengers to, to come back. And so um, we're, we're, um, we're, we're looking at a, a what would be a permanent reduction to our budgeted headcount, understanding that if things come back, we'll need to restore some. Do you have collective bargaining there? We have a union, but collective bargaining is not legal, so it's a meet and confer here in Texas. Okay, that's a little bit different than from uh, Chicago, isn't it? it? It is a little different, although you know we you know we res respect our employees and 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 you know we want all of our ATU folks to be happy to be at dark, and so you know we. The so meet and confer is, is a sincere effort to uh, to try to understand uh, uh, what the union is looking for, the union workers uh, are looking for. Uh, let me uh, give you a, a, a non-financial question, and I think we briefly talked about this last week. You have a lot of workers that are on the front line, the the rail, the, the bus drivers. How do you, you deal with that, you know, both? you know, human resource-wise and, you know, health-wise and so on? Sure. And it's a, there's, a, there's a number of things. Certainly, um, the sanitizer, the personal protective equipment, uh, you know, securing that. And so um, our frontline workers have masks and, and have the ability to sanitize their hands. We stepped up the uh, sanitation of our buses and trains. Um, and so... Um, doing uh, some pretty thorough cleaning. There's some interesting fodders and, and other kinds of things we've got uh, for the cars. So, so on the physical front, uh, doing that, and then on the, the, the mentality, uh, you know, the coping with all of this, our employee assistance program has really stepped up, and we've been uh, very um, uh, proactive in, in encouraging people if they're feeling stressed uh, about you know, the environment and what's going on, um, that they should reach out to our EAP um, and, 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 you know, get that kind of uh, counsel. You know, it's an interesting environment. Do you think your transit agency is kind of representative of what's going on with the other transit entities, or do you talk to the other financial individuals? Yeah, I, as you know, John, the, the transit industry, you know, talks to each other. Um, and, you know, the legacy systems were, were hit a little harder. Of course, they had greater densities, and, and so, you know, a little bit different environment. So New York and Chicago, you know, have had that much more uh, intensity as far as uh, dealing with the pandemic. Um, for the newer systems, you know, like uh, like Dallas and Salt Lake City and Denver and Fort Wayne and so on, um, you know, we're all kind of in the in the same boat, looking at about the same level of ridership. And let's growth. talk about uh, debt and your bonds. Have you uh, done anything with that since COVID nineteen hit in terms of refinancing or issuing more bonds? Well, we we were just darn lucky right before um, you know the the it all came to pass. People realized you know, what was going to happen to the economy. We, we issued the uh, $100 million that we were going to issue for the year. So we, we kind of were the last folks to, 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 you know, do that in a normal environment. Um, and so we're not looking to issue any further debt this year. Um, Standard & Poor's has, has, put us, has put the industry on negative outlook. 
um, recognizing that, you know, we're all relying on things like sales tax, which has taken a hit. And, uh, um, you know, New York, you know, one of the, you know, marquee credits, um, was able to, um, issue some bonds a couple of three weeks ago. Um, they had to work hard at it though, which, um, you know, is very telling, I think, but New York's got to work hard at um, it. What about capital? Have you cut back on, on purchases of rail cars or on uh, buses? We, we took, we have 200 active capital projects. Now, some of these are small, you know, fixed sidewalks, kind of thing. but we took a look at, at all of them and said, you know, what can we, um, what, what can we lower in scope? What can we just forego for a time being? And so, um, I'll be briefing the board later on, uh, to talk about the fact that we, um, found a cost savings of about 35 million and looking to push back the first, uh, a number of capital projects, uh, to the tune of about $40 million of cash flow improvement. So yeah, we've had, we've had to take a serious look at our you capital. Had service reductions, though, it would imply that you wouldn't need as much capital. Is that right? That that it does help that um, if you're um, you know if you're running less service, you can rotate your buses and have less wear and tear on your tires and and uh, you know that sort of thing. And then so I've got it one does go question. hand in hand. So you kind of like the bonus question. Uh, this, this is going to be the hardest one. Uh, Long term, how, how do you project, like, what's going to happen with ridership, fare box revenue, and so on? Yeah, you know, I, John, as you know, the, the transit, transit industry has been wrestling with the future of transit for a while with the arrival of Uber and Lyft and, and, and that sort of thing. And, and now with social distancing and maybe some folks uncomfortable to get hurry back onto the bus and train. Plus, a lot of us have discovered working from home kind of sort of works. And so, um, you know, how does all that affect um, the transportation in the future? And, and, and with, uh, with one of the um, big um, accounting uh, and, and advisory firms, we've been trying to wrestle through that and say, you know, what, what, what is it? the future of public transportation look like, and then what kind of skill sets do you need? You know, for example, you probably need a little more tech savvy to, uh, to meet the expectations of today's uh, transit rider. It's, it's, it's so, a yeah, tough environment. I was trying to think of the different governments uh, within that the GFOA serves in their membership, and I think transit is in one of the more difficult rates of any other type of government that I can think of at the moment. No, well, yeah, it, uh, yeah, the, the, the pandemic, uh, accelerated, uh, some, some things that we were wrestling with already. Well, and maybe so, this is because uh, I'm a budget person, to so wrap up, uh, our conversation on that note, and, uh, 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 Joe, I wanted to thank you. This is Joe Costello uh, from Dallas, and I wanted to thank you. And I'm John Fishbein from the GFOA, and I want to thank everybody for joining us.